I love my Area 51M specced out with an i9-9900K Intel CPU with a base clock of 3.6 GHz with turbo boost all the way up to 5 GHz, 4 gigs of SSD storage, 64 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA RTX 2080 able to push Forza 4 to 144 frames per second in 1080 and 60 frames per second at 4K. It can chomp through any AAA title out there and takes a chomp at the wallet with the $3,500 price tag. Not to mention with the new temp generation i9 CPUs with 10 cores and 20 threads, this PC is already outdated and is just a year old. I could have bought three PlayStation 5s and three Xbox Series Xs for that price. And this year just feels like it sucks to be a PC gamer. What's going on guys? Gabe with Review Dork and the other day I was putting together my list of parts for my next gaming video production rig. Then it dawned on me, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 will be ridiculously affordable at launch. How affordable? Apple Jacks. What do you think the price points are gonna be for the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5? I'm hoping it's $499, but I think it's gonna push like $599 or maybe $700. The speculated prices, $499, $599, even $699, those price points seem rather expensive, but for the enthusiast PC gamer, that's as much as a good CPU and motherboard alone. Now, let's Look at these two gaming consoles set to launch this holiday season. The Xbox Series X GPU is based on AMD's RDNA 2 architecture and capable of 12 teraflops. And Sony's PlayStation 5 is um, also based on AMD's RDNA 2 architecture. And we'll have a GPU with 10.28 teraflops of uh, computational power. Now the GPU in my current gaming rig an NVIDIA RTX 2080 boosting 10.1 teraflops of data crunching power. It retails somewhere between $800 and $1,000, even after the release of the 2080 Super and TI. So basically, I have a comparable machine. Applejack, you're looking at a PlayStation 5. So what the hell are teraflops? Well, flops stand for floating point operations per second. And floating point arithmetic is the common way to crunch numbers in game development and has been the standard for the last 25 years. Now, contrary to floating point operations are fixed point operations, which hasn't been seen in gaming since the original PlayStation. And if you weren't at least seven years old by 1994, then you may or may not remember the poor game visuals. Applejack, you ever played for the PlayStation, original PlayStation? Yeah, I played it a couple times. Okay, so back on track. So games have to process a ton of data and that's why flops are an important benchmark. The more flops the GPU can do, the faster the data can be processed, hence more power and better performance. So when we compare the speculated GPUs, are actually Microsoft dropped their spec sheet already, so we know the teraflops. But when we compare this to high-end graphics cards, the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti is one of the most powerful graphics cards out right now, pushing nearly 13.45 teraflops. Now, that's just a, just that much better than what the Xbox Series X is uh, speculated to do. Now, this GPU is costing $1,200. If you have deeper pockets, NVIDIA's Titan RTX is the world's most powerful GPU with 16.31 teraflops, but with a price tag of $2,500. $2,500. That's a used car. That's probably as much as your first used car was. Applejacks, what was your first car? 2008 Scion XB. It's good to be you. In my days, I was driving a station wagon. That was my first used car. Banana yellow. The station wagon was cool, you know? You're in your teens, you got room in the back. <laughs> now with the recent spec drop from Microsoft, we know that the Xbox series will sport an eight core custom Zen 2 processor running at 3.8 gigahertz. But when you compare that performance in the current retail environment, 
most eight core CPUs start around 300 bucks. Now, when we talk about Microsoft and we're talking about like their, their, their ability to make game installs faster. Well, us guys over here in the PC camp, we know that that is thanks to super fast NVMe storage. And it is the storage of my choice for all of my video editing projects. But in the retail space, this component starts at a hundred bucks for one terabyte of storage. Now the more popular NVMe's such as the Samsung 970 EVO Plus, which sits in this beauty here, commands a retail price of $190. So for a PC builder, the motherboard, CPU, and NVMe storage would cost nearly $500. And this is on the low end. Apple Jacks, we were, we were going through our rig yesterday. We were doing our custom rig. I mean, we had it priced at what? 35, four, almost $4,000, right? It was almost $4,000. $4,000. And even with a 2080 Ti GPU, I mean, you're not really getting that much more performance compared to the Xbox Series X. Now, I'm not really talking about PlayStation 5 and it's really gonna be interesting to see how PlayStation uh, handles this because there is a discrepancy in teraflop and computational power, but I'm not gonna buy a PlayStation 5. I have one right here. So basically, with just the core components, a motherboard, a CPU, I mean, we're not even including the cost of RAM, a power supply, a graphics card, uh, which can easily take any PC build, 2,500, 3,000, 4,000. So yes, even at 599 to 699, the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 are bargains, especially when we compare price to performance and we can definitely thank economies of scales for making that happen so basically microsoft and playstation they basically went to like the manufacturers costco and said let me get five million of those let me get 50 million of those yeah we got to make it cheap right and, and and i get it right as pc gamers we're buying we're not buying in bulk right so I guess as a PC gamer, I tip the hat to the next-gen consoles and, and, and I promise to be kinder to console gamers. Applejax, what's your favorite console? I'm playing right now on a PlayStation 4. PlayStation 4? You suck. And, and I promise to be kinder than not now. But is this the end of the PC Master Race? And no, no, never, ever. We absolutely love our pricey rigs. Plus we can do other cool things like CAD, Blender, game development, along with a bunch of other boring things like check email. This is Gabe signing out. I got a Ryzen Threadripper build and it works and I'm pretty excited. <laughs> My wallet's getting raided today. But thanks for watching. Get yourself a PlayStation 5, get yourself an Xbox Series X. It's a good time to be a console gamer. Meanwhile, I'm gonna cry once we stop recording because I'm gonna have to part with almost $4,000 for an Xbox Series X to still outperform me. By the way, there are rumors out there that the Xbox will be able to push 4K at 120 frames per second. This thing right here would just fry. Just absolutely fry. Okay, I promise I'm done. Peace.